In episode 113 of the Maluli Asset Management Show, we're going to talk about dividends. Welcome to the Maluli Asset Show. I'm your host, Tom Maluli, and this is episode number 113. Thanks for tuning in. I want to talk today about stock dividends. It's not something that we talk about that much, but it's something that does come up in conversations that we have here in the office and in person and on the phone with folks. A lot of people say, you know, if a stock isn't doing anything, well, I'm getting a dividend. I'm getting paid to wait. Is that really such a good idea? Let's talk about this a little bit. Stock dividends, it's funny, over and over throughout my career, I've heard people say, well, I can sit with XYZ, fill in the blank stock, because they pay me a good dividend, so I'm getting paid to wait. I'm gonna name a few names in the course of this video. I wanna be clear right up front, we're not recommending any of these names. These are not recommendations to buy or sell. The most glaring example recently has been General Electric, GE. At the end of 2016, now we're recording this in November of 2018, so just two years ago, At the end of 2016, GE raised their dividend, their quarterly dividend, to 24 cents a quarter. That's 96 cents a year. That's almost a dollar a share. At the time, General Electric, GE, was yielding 3% because the stock was trading around $32 a share. Pretty good. If you think back two years ago, getting 3% at the bank was nearly impossible. Exactly one year later, or one year back from now, they cut their dividend in half in 2017, in the December quarter. And now that dividend went from 24 cents a quarter to 12 cents a quarter. Now you say, hey, you know, we're talking about pennies. What's the difference? You know, 12 cents a quarter on 1,000 shares, 2,000 shares, 5,000 shares. Do the math. This stuff really starts to pile up after every 90 days. So the dividends are very important for people who are looking for income or, as they like to say, getting paid to wait. So a year ago, GE cut their dividend from $0.24 a quarter to $0.12 a quarter. Uh, That means that their dividend was $0.48 a year. And at the time, a year ago, the stock was yielding 2.8%. Now, wait a second. A moment ago, when they raised their dividend in 2016, I said the stock was yielding around 3%. So put your algebra hat back on. We know the yield, we know the dividend, what's the stock price? If you do the math, last December, GE had been trading around $17 a share. So the stock, while you were getting paid to wait, the stock went from the 30s down into the mid-teens. Not so good. Now, fast forward to today, GE has announced recently that their December quarterly dividend is now going to be one penny. One penny. They're going to pay four cents per share per year. Um, The stock is now trading somewhere between nine and ten dollars a share. So getting paid to wait hasn't really paid off, has it? Because the stock two years ago, thirty-two dollars. Today it's nine or ten bucks. You've got a couple of dividends that doesn't really help, does it? Companies cut their dividends, cut their dividends when business slows down or when business is bad. And in recessions, a lot of these blue chip stocks, they'll reduce their dividends or they'll eliminate their dividends. I just want to give you an example. Let's just take a walk down memory lane. 10 years ago, in 2008 and 2009, GE cut their dividend back then. They cut it by two-thirds. Bank of America cut their dividend in 2008, and then they cut it again in 2009. J.P. Morgan, pretty good stock, cut their their dividend by 88%. Wells Fargo cut their dividend. Pfizer also cut their dividend, but Pfizer was buying uh, another company, so they really needed the cash in the short term, and they raised it pretty quickly. Citibank uh, uh, cut their dividend twice. 
uh, between 2008 and 2009. When these companies are in trouble, they're going to cut their dividend. Banks cut their dividends. A lot of companies do when they need the cash. So when you're looking at dividend payers, you want to look for companies that have really strong cash flow. Again, not recommending any particular name or a sector, but you look at a company like Apple, got a really, uh, they have really strong cash flow. They may not have a large dividend, but these companies with strong cash flows don't get hurt as much when the markets go down. Electric utilities, another good example of that. Another example from the other end of the spectrum, master limited partnerships. Be really careful with these things. Uh, a lot of clients buy them because they like the cash flow. They're, they're really sexy kind of yields. But there comes a lot of risk with these things, you, and you got to know what's going on. Institutions, if for the most part, can't own master limited partnerships, so it's a retail product. It's an individual invest. It's individual investors get involved in these things. When they have hard times, these master limited partnerships, They'll cut the dividend, they'll eliminate the dividend, and the stock gets destroyed. There's no support for these things. It's very, very important uh, to know what you're getting involved in. Dividend payers throwing a blanket over it and just saying, hey, I'm getting paid to wait. Some salesman probably taught you that line. Don't buy into that.